there. I'm board certified professional organizer, Kathy Burns. I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is designed for busy entrepreneurs just like you who want to take better control of your business and move forward with less stress and more success. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Organized Energized Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at thepodcast.organizedandenergized.com. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter at Organized Energy and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. Hi, everyone. I am so happy you're here because I am speaking with my good friend, Carrie Teppanino, and we're going to talk about how to beat overwhelm, stop stressing out, and learn how to thrive. And Carrie is a master at this. So welcome, Carrie. I'm so glad you're here. I am so excited to be here. We have been friends for so long, it seems like, and seen each other through so much. And uh, and I know you don't take lightly who you put in front of your audience. You're mama bear with that. So I feel very honored to be here. So thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. So I know a lot about you, but these people listening probably might not know that about, that much about you, Carrie. So let's hear a little bit of your backstory on why you're doing what you're doing right now. Okay. So, oh my goodness. Um, great place to start. And I appreciate that. So our friends can realize like, Hey, I don't feel like I'm rock solid right now. I feel like I'm at rock bottom. I want to get rock solid too. And so it, it helps to hear other people speak about their journey. I feel um so many moons ago so i've been in the personal development space for about 20 years but um I, what led me here is i was in a place in my own life where i didn't feel great about myself my confidence wasn't great my uh, self-esteem wasn't great i was working in overwhelm and stress and i was also in this conversation of wait a minute like I thought my life would look different when I got to this point, right? I'm in my 50s now, I was in my 30s then, even at the, through my 20s, I always thought it should look different than it did. And, um, and what I finally realized was my 50 pounds of being overweight, my disturbed relationships, my broke bank account, not having a career I loved, that all was an outside manifestation of me not having the personal development skills inside to really create the life that I really wanted to have. And so, um, you know, push came to shove one night, I really ended up in a, in a come to Jesus conversation with myself and realized like, if I don't stop this cycle of self-destruction, then nothing gets better from this place. Like I continue to go down this rabbit hole over and over and over again, and then wonder why nothing ever works for me. And so that night was really a wake up call. And there's more to that story, but in a nutshell, that night was really a wake up call for me. And, um, and looking back in hindsight, like I know that really it was a God moment for me that somehow got me up off that bathroom floor and decided to do whatever it took to find the mentors, to find the community, to get the strategies, get the skills to turn my life around. And um, and so from that place, my, my business really birthed itself. The One Thought Away project really birthed itself because I felt like I cracked the code on my own, my own um, the uncomfortableness. And then I just wanted to help other women do the same. Mm, I love it. I love it. And we all get there overwhelmed because there's just too many choices out there and we're not confident to make any way forward. So talk to me about the first step that you did when you decided you were going to just break through and make change. What was your first step out? Um, for me, the first step was letting go of thinking I already knew what to do. <laughs> right. Or yeah. even, I mean, I'm a really smart girl, as you know, but even if I knew what to do logically in my heart, I wasn't, I wasn't in the practice of what I knew to do. And so I was constantly shortchanging myself. Every day was another promise that I was, that I would make to myself about turning my life around or not eating that or exercising this way or doing work a certain way. And by night, I had broken my promise in myself once again. So it was a constant cycle of, of dishonoring myself, breaking my commitments to myself, and then eventually just not trusting myself to be able to do anything to move my life forward. So a huge first step for me 
was letting go of control and finding somebody that actually could help me and had results that she had in her life that I really wanted. And then shadow what she did, take the strategy, stay coachable, even when it's not easy. I stayed coachable and I took her coaching, right? And um, honestly, in the long run, investing my resources, my money, my time and my energy into myself at that time, even though I didn't have the time and the money and everything, it, but in the long run, it saved me so much time, energy, money, and heartache to, to take the big S for superwoman off my chest and to realize like, it's not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength to raise my hand and say, I need support. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, I like the taking the S off your chest. You know, we all try to be super women and we don't want to say that we don't know what to do. And, um, you know, your advice of, well, it takes time to make time. It takes money to make money. Even if you don't think you have the resources to launch or to do whatever you're doing, for those of you listening out there, you have to do it. There's no way around not taking action. If you don't take action of some sort and you don't invest resources of your time and your money, you're not going to get where you want to want to be. Uh, so I think that's really, really good advice. If you had to look back and tell your 18 year old Carrie something, what would you tell her right now? Now that you know what you know? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would, I would tell her to not let go of her dreams, right? Like, so we we have i always say the dreams and desires in our hearts are like a lifeline to our souls right it's like they're they're there for a reason and even though those dreams and those desires and that vision that we have in our life three years out two years out ten years out it might feel really big or how can i ever get there and stuff like that doesn't happen for girls like me or whatever that that conversation is from our childhood like they truly are there for a reason and nothing is put into our heart nothing is downloaded into our heart space unless there's a way to make it happen and so what i would want to tell 18 year old carrie is um keep going you know like don't don't rip yourself off don't come this far to only come this far like go all the way humble yourself and uh and allow your again allow yourself to be supported yeah, I think that's great advice. And I so agree with you about this, that I think every desire is a God gift. It's like, it's, it's like an expansion wanting to happen. And if we have a desire, it's there for a reason, you know, even if it's a crazy yeah. desire, it's there for a reason and it's our own unique desire. So we're the only one that can really express it. Uh, I love what you said about that. And I, I resonate so, so deeply with that. So let's talk about one thought away. Let's talk about mm. that because here we are, you're getting ready. The book launched, okay? Yesterday, gang, the book launched yesterday. So let's so talk good. about this book and your one thought away. Oh my gosh, you guys. So this is what I want our friends to know who are here listening to us. And um, honestly, wherever you are coming into this conversation, you are led here for a reason. Trust that no matter what your current age, economic status, political status, shape, size, whatever. I promise you there is a nugget here for everybody. And the One Thought Away Project. So I'm the CEO and the founder of the One Thought Away Project. And the One Thought Away book just launched. You guys are some of the first people to hear. It just launched yesterday. And it really is a book for anybody who is ready to transform their lives, ready to be the person that they know, they know they're made for more. They're no, they just know that this isn't everything that I'm supposed to have. There's something more here for me. I just don't know what to do or how to get it. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we really focus on first and foremost is what are you thinking? Because you are one thought away from having the life that you want to have today or not. You're one thought away from being healthy today or not. You're one thought away from being happy today or not, right? And so when we go in there and we really start to shift and change how you're thinking, and that is easier said than done, but we map it out in a way that is so easy to comprehend because your brain wants to hook into something. I'm, I'm that nerdy girl that loves to study the brain and I do all the brain research and all the mindset research around brain. And your mind is going to hook into a plan. 
And so we want to be strategic about what plan we're giving our brains to hook into, our minds to hook into, and, and make sure that we're doing that by design and not by default. That life plan that your brain is hooking into, like if it's something it believes, whatever your brain believes, cognitively believes, it's got to prove itself right. So it's even going to be working you towards that that idea or, or vision, even when you sleep. So we want to make sure we're feeding your brain what it is you want to create for your life and who you want to be as a person you respect in the world. And so in the One Without a Way book, we really start to help you understand all the beliefs that maybe you have brought into your life up until this point, we debunk the ones that aren't working for you. We get rid of the ones that are not serving you. We open up this space to bring in that expanded thinking of what's possible for you and really show you how to master this, this mindset piece so that you really get that you are one thought away from having an extraordinary life or not. And, and the last thing I want to say, the other thing I want to say to, about that, Kathy, before I pass it back is the or not piece is really important because until we realize the impact of the or not, we don't really understand what it's costing us in our lives to not change how we're thinking because how we're thinking is, is in direct relationship of how we're in relationship to our emotions how we think, how we're in relationship to our emotions is absolutely impacting the actions that we take, the actions that we consistently take become our habits, right? And then that is impacting our results 100% of the time. So this thinking piece is, this mindset thinking piece is really important. And the or not, I want us to get, and in the book, we help you really get into the details of what is at risk for you to not shift your thinking, like those dreams that you have on your life, you know, the dreams to travel the world or to create generational wealth and then maybe create a nonprofit that helps something that's really, you know, passionate for you or to start a family or to heal a diagnosis or, or transform a diagnosis. Like that or not piece is important. Unless we're intimate with what it's costing us to stay stuck we just have too much of a payoff in staying stuck because it's where we're comfortable. We either get to look good, be right, or play safe. And so, so really getting into, wow, if I don't change this way of being, this way of thinking, I honestly might make it to my deathbed and look back with regret. Mm -hmm. We're not. <laughs> if, we not. Change, if, we, if we change that thought. I'm, I'm so with <laughs> thought, you know, Thought, word, deed, you know, what we think manifests, what we speak manifests. And we generally yeah. speak what we're thinking, um, unless we're holding it back or, you know, we're thinking all the subconscious bad stuff and saying good stuff and it's that it negates itself. So I'm with you on that thinking about the, you know, what do you think? And do I want to think that way or do I want to think a different way? Uh, it sounds like a great little uh, roadmap for those of you out there who are stuck and, you know, going on that wheel of self-doubt, uh, being on that wheel of I don't think I can ever do it. Uh, this is a way to break through that and change, you know, break through that barrier of your own mind, <laughs> which is ironic yes. in itself, you think? <laughs> yeah, we're totally over our minds we start paying attention to what we're thinking so uh the or not piece i think is pretty brilliant actually i've never considered it that way yeah um, thank so, you thank you yeah it's, you know there is a powerful. lot of there is a lot of cost uh to being stuck and there is a, a great amount of cost to not paying attention to what your brain is saying and it do, you know your brain is your monkey mind not necessarily your soul speaking you know we listen a lot to right. that i do believe right and we yeah we call it the monkey in our community we also call it the monkey mind you know that little voice in the back of your head that's saying all the things that you know well what if it doesn't work for you or what if what if you go for it and you fail or what if you actually succeed you know a lot of people don't realize that that's a legitimate fear like what do you mean why would i be afraid of success well you might be surprised right and so what we say is take the monkey mind, put it in the, if you're in the, the driver's seat of your life, 
right? Or you're going to get back in the driver's seat of your life. Your life was a car. We're going to take the monkey mind. We're going to put it in the baby seat, the child seat, in the back seat, strap it down with a seatbelt, give it a banana, and you get to roll down your window, turn on your favorite music on the radio, whether it's, I don't know, whether it's spiritual music or ACDC, whatever floats your soul, and just... <laughs> sing at the top of your voice and get yourself back into the driver's seat of your life, right? Stop listening to the monkey, give the monkey a banana, take, take your control back, <laughs> right? Give the monkey a banana, shut him up. <laughs> shut him up, give him a banana, give him something to distract him. As you know, I have a lot of young kids. And so it's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm good with this piece. I know how that car seat works. I got that car seat down. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm so impressed with you, Carrie. I mean, you know, we've known each other for a long time. I mean, it's funny that you said you're a brainiac because I met you when you were doing cranial sacral. You're a really good oh, yeah. therapist. That was way back in the day, right? And you yeah. wanted to manifest all this stuff and you wanted to manifest the love. You wanted to manifest the family. You wanted to manifest, and you've done it all. I mean, you've man you've got like brilliant children now. You have twins, you have a, a, a toddler, a six-year-old, and you have a love of your life. And I'm just so pleased to say that you've done it. So for those of you who are listening out there, you know, I have watched a transformation and she rocks the world. She's, she's grabbed it. She's done it. Um, and so I think this book is really the perfect timing for a lot of people. A lot of people have been lost and they're in transition. I know that a lot of you listeners out there, you might have been in transition. You this is an organizing podcast, so I have to say, Carrie, you're very, you get a lot done, girl. I don't know how I you do. get done. What is your favorite organizing tactic or hack that you use on a regular basis? Are you talking about for time or space? Anything. Okay. Oh, I'll give you one for both. So, um, because I honestly believe that our space is a direct reflection of our mindset, right? So, I am really clear that I love my space to be clean and beautiful and uncluttered. And you can tell I like a lot of whites, right? We do splashes of color. You can see a little pink in there. We do splashes of color, but even with three young kids, I still prefer white and people think I'm crazy, but it's just, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel, you know, in a sacredness. And so um, don't hoard, don't keep things that aren't necessary. Don't even let it in the house. Don't take your pile of mail into the house, just take in what you need, get the junk out of your mail even before you come in the door, sort your mail before you come in the door. But not just the mail, the mail is symbolic for a lot of things, right? And so um, I'm really adamant about also at the end of the day, I mean, I have three wild childs, so my house can get messy pretty fast. And then they get to do that, right? Because they're kids and they get to have free self-expression. And I reset my stage, my house, I reset set my stage at the end of my day when the kiddos are all in bed, and so I can wake up to the clean space again, right? My right. office is pretty much a kid-free zone, except for my my out my eight-year-old's reading corner. Um, and so my office is my space for the most part, because my twins are only two, so they're kind of like they're crazy. They, they get into everything. Um, so <laughs> that that is my my space tip mm -hmm. that is just so important to me personally. And then the other thing that I would say is um, my time blocking, which is another method of organizing. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've organized my my work time. Like I only have child support, um, child care support from 7.30 to four, Monday through Friday. And so I really can't work past four, right? And in the morning, I'm taking my oldest to school and everything. So really I work like nine to four. And so I get to be super lasered focused in regards to my time because we have, we have multiple groups of women's group coaching running at all times. We usually have three running at all times. We, I, I run a significant business. And so, um, so I, I schedule time blocking. Like I do certain tasks on certain days of the week and I do certain tasks on certain weeks of the month. And so I'm very, very strategic how I manage my time. I don't say I'm going to do a hundred things in one day, like the book. I wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to write the book in a day or in a week, but I would say, okay, well, can I do 500 words in a day or 1500 words in a day? Like I set myself up to win. I set myself up to win, but I also do get stretchy. I, I push myself 
to the next level all the time. I'm constantly staying the student. So um, that is a space, organizing my space and organizing my time. And that's time and energy, really. Time and yeah. energy are like, they're married, right? They go hand in hand. So I yeah. hope that helps somebody here. Oh, I think a lot. And, and you know, of course, you're, you're speaking my words. So it's all about time yeah. blocking. It's all about having space so that you can think clearly and actually get stuff done and not be distracted by other things in your environment. Uh, resetting from the day is fantastic, of course. So you wake up nice, clean slate. Uh, slate. So, yep. yeah. And, and and you're you're proof that it works. So uh, you're a living testament to being organized. <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, I am always working on myself. I will say, if anybody, author, speaker, coach, or anybody tells you that they have it all figured out, run for the hills, right? Like I am the first to say, don't put me on a pedestal. I really want women and audience. You know, I know you work with men and women, and I, and I love our men too. But I really want to help others be a hero of their own story, right? But um, but I do openly share what I've learned that really works. But I think it's important, like I'm Yoda, you're Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, like I'm just the guide for the women who come into our communities, right? And even the book is a guide, right? And you get to you get to breathe inspired action into everything from the book or everything from our coaching programs so that you learn that you can create a transformation in your life not just once but 10 times a hundred times you know however time many times you choose and that is really like you get to be the hero everybody gets to be the hero of their own story right run it run to the hills if somebody says they have it all figured out because yeah. it's life is dynamic it's organic it's fluid like that's that would be wild, right? All, we are all a work in progress, girlfriend. So, you know, yes. it's, there's no one way to do anything is what I totally believe. Like one thing that could totally work for one person might not work for the other person. And, and that's why we all have different brains. And that's why I think the or not is a great, uh, is a great example to just think of, you know, or not, uh, this is my year of what if, you know, what okay. if, that could happen. So okay. I like to have, you know, a mantra for every year. This is my year of what yep. if, you know, what if, what if it could just be like that? Wow. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. What if it's better than you ever imagined? This is my year of ease. And so not easy, but my intention is ease. So no matter what life brings, I get to recalibrate and come, okay, what, how do I get to go into this conversation or into this, into this moment or this experience or this project from a place of like, ease like it doesn't mean it's easy but ease so yeah. that's that's my intention for the year yeah water over a rock nothing better than that <laughs> right water over a rock water over a rock just just go right down right make it yeah. nice, and smooth, nice and smooth i um, like that okay. okay so uh my next question which i'm asking everyone is how do you celebrate your successes what do you do oh my goodness pause and, and, and celebrate success Oh my goodness, we celebrate all the time. Celebration is actually a huge part, a huge part of our success formula and our community, but also my family. Like I feel like I'm celebrating every single day because I have, you know, my house is full of noisy giggles and playing and, you know, somersaults and all that stuff. So I feel like I'm in a constant state of success, a celebration, I should say. Um, but we're really adamant also with our clients and also with my team, very adamant, like our team calls, we start with moments of success, like, okay, what is everybody going to be proud of? Let's do a round table. And we start there first. Um, we also do that work with our clients because, um, the more we start to experience ourselves as somebody who can have follow through completion energy and success you start to understand, wow, if I did that once, I could probably do it again, right? And so I'm really, really big on that. So for me, um, it, you know, it's a lot of it is just um, putting words to it with the people I care about, like on our team, or our clients. And then with my family, I would say celebrating is like, it's very playful for, for me and with in this season of my life, it's very playful. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He's got little ones and they, they celebrate all day long anyhow. So yeah, they do. <laughs> they <live like> very <laughs> with their giggles. I love that. Know, <laughs> they haven't learned not to celebrate and hopefully they never will. Right. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. That. 
Um, okay, so you have a valuable free resource, and I know we're talking about the book launch here. So what's going to happen with the people who are listening out here? What are we offering? Oh my goodness, you guys, we have so much for you. So honestly, the book just released yesterday. Really, you guys are some of the first people to see it. And so um, if you go to onethoughtawaybook.com, onethoughtawaybook.com, and with the people who are getting the book right away, we've We've putting in some visualizations to go with some of the chapters. We're doing um, certain processes that we want to gift you with to really make sure that you're taking what you're learning in the book and you're applying it to your own life in a way that is not overwhelming, in a way that brings fast, easy, quick results, right? Like real shifts right away. And, um, and we just really want you to be one of our first readers and, and get all those bonuses and gifts that come along with the book. Okay, and I guess we have a 99 cents deal here for those who are oh, quick, quick, yes. quick, quick action takers. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, so, and for a limited amount of time, you guys, it's only 99 cents on Amazon. But I, yeah, so you and get all your girlfriends to get it too. And I, this is a great book for men too, by the way. It doesn't matter which gender, it's genderless. But, um, but I believe you want to go to onethoughtawaybookfirst.com first. And then see what's on that page. And then, um, but then of course, depending on when you hear this, this podcast, it's going to be on Amazon, but right now during the launch, it's only 99 cents. So, um, please, please share it, share it, buy 20 of them, give them to all your girlfriends. And it's a, it's an amazing gift, the gift of life, the gift of happiness, the gift of feeling empowered in regards to one's life is, is one of the best gifts I think we could give our loved ones. Absolutely love it. Absolutely. And that's very generous. And uh, everybody grab it while you can. 99 cents. Okay. For those who are listening, you got to take action really quick because I'm sure yes. that sale will go away. You know, we're working on breaking some records here. Yes. Yes. Thank you, you guys. That's so fun. And what that also does is that puts us in a deeper conversation together around the book. And we're going to be, we're going to be continuing to feed the first readers um, special things and nurture you as we because we're just a new book it's exciting and so we want to really keep that that fun and that connection we want to hear your testimonials we want to hear your stories we want to highlight you as you go through the book and and the visualizations and meditations and stuff that are tied to it and um and we want to celebrate with you what's going to happen by getting the book and reading the book love it Okay, gang. Well, thank you for being on the show. I so appreciate your time, Carrie. And it's good to reconnect. We need to do I this. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Love but it. Take care, you guys. Until next week, uh, we will see you. And you guys have a fabulous week. And thanks again, Carrie. Make sure to download her book. The link's right down there. Awesome. Bye, everybody. I can't wait to hear your testimonies. <laughs> take care. Hey, thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to hear more, feel free to subscribe on the platform of your choice. Also, if you feel so inclined, I would truly appreciate a good rating from you to me. Have a stellar day.